Alaska. America's last frontier. And greatest wilderness. Immense. Unspoiled. Awe inspiring. Home to half the world's glaciers. America's highest mountains and ice sheets that stretch to the North Pole. Inhabited by the world's largest land predators, herds of ancient beasts, and leviathans from the deep. The land is hostile but its richness and diversity is unparalleled in the Northern Hemisphere. All must be resilient and adaptable if they're to survive a year in the wild of Alaska. Alaska's been in winter's grip for seven months. Animals have scraped by, barely able to eke out a living. Finally, there's a glimmer of hope. Days are growing longer, and rising temperatures have triggered one of the most dramatic transformations on the continent. The sea ice is melting. The big breakup has begun. By April, waves are back, pounding the shore of Alaska's largest northerly island. St. Lawrence lies 100 miles from the Alaskan mainland, but shares a climate with nearby Siberia. It's bleak here, but not lifeless. Five months ago, this female arctic fox was part of a group, kept alive by the frozen remains of a whale carcass. But now, they've exhausted every food cache, and this female needs a fresh supply of meat more than ever. Mers abandoned St. Lawrence in the autumn when their feeding grounds froze over. Now they're returning in droves. Around three million seabirds nest here in the spring. But this year, there's a problem. Access to the cliffs is hindered by ice. The Mers will have to put any plans for breeding on hold. This delay is bad news for the hungry fox. It's mating season. She's paired up with a male and due to give birth in seven weeks. If she doesn't eat soon, her body will reabsorb her developing embryos. A desperate act to preserve every scrap of nutrition.
salvation may be buried under the snow. Arctic foxes have such keen hearing, they can find voles even when they can't see them. But voles are canny. If they don't move, the fox can't get a fix. By paddling her hind feet, she may panic them into moving. But there's still a thick layer of frozen snow to get through. She needs a regular supply of voles each day while she's pregnant. It's a deadly game of hide and seek. And right now, the voles are winning. While spring drags its heels on St. Lawrence, it's making headway on the mainland it still drops below freezing at night. But there are only eight hours of darkness. Barely enough time for the aurora to shine. Daybreak wipes the dazzling display from the sky and replaces it with one on the ground. Male sharp-tailed grouse gather here each morning for a ritual called a lek, so that females can choose who to mate with. And they're very fussy. Only the fittest, most attractive males will do. If he's to coax one down from the aspen, he needs to catch her eye. Tricky when a younger male wants to hog the limelight. If he loses this spot, the hens won't give him a second look. He stands his ground, and it works. Now he's got her attention. Time to pull out all the stops. He rattles his tail quills, flashes his throat pouch, and throws in some of his finest moves. Proof that he's fit, healthy, and unencumbered by parasites. But she's not convinced. She always compares multiple males before selecting a mate. If he's to sire any chicks this year, he'll need to up his game and try again tomorrow. Whilst grouse fight for the right to produce this year's offspring, 500 miles away in Katmai wilderness area, some animals are already raising theirs. Female bears look after their young for nearly three years. This family is fresh out of hibernation. And they're hungry. When these twins were born 15 months ago, they were blind, helpless, 
and weighed a little under a pound. They were already 80 times their birth weight. Big enough for a tussle, but small enough to be vulnerable. The beach is a good place to find breakfast, but it's also dangerous. There are other hungry bears out here, and adult males will kill youngsters they don't know. They need to stick close to mum. She's the only thing keeping them alive. It's May in Alaska, the time when bears leave their winter dens in the Aleutian Mountains and head to the coast to find food. In spring, warm, wet air blows over the sea, cools, and casts a veil of fog over Hello Bay. But it won't deter this brown bear from teaching her twins the art of clamming. There's a lot to learn about surviving in this wilderness. Young bears must learn where to find food and how to harvest it. Clams thrive here, but they're buried in the sand. Bears have more scent receptors than a bloodhound. So it's just a case of sniffing them out. Four inch claws make light work of digging. Letting her guzzle hundreds of clams at low tide. Valuable extra protein for a bear that hasn't eaten for months. The cubs should be paying attention, but seem more interested in where the world's gone. And with a milk bar so close, it's hard to resist the easy option. She's having none of it. Maybe hunger will make them focus. Almost 50% of bear cubs don't even make it past their first birthday. One of the reasons is wanderlust. Cubs are keen to explore every new sound and smell. but it's easy to get lost in the fog. And bumping into the wrong bear could be fatal. Luckily, it's mum that looms from the gloom first. Twins must learn fast. Or one day, naivety will get them killed.
warm air from the Pacific is opening up feeding grounds all along Alaska's southern coastline. 350 miles east of Hallo Bay lies the Copper River Delta, the drainage basin for 24,000 square miles of Alaskan wilderness. Meltwater bathes the mudflats in minerals, feeding a habitat teeming with marine invertebrates. Food for hungry sandpipers. The delta is a vital pit stop for almost five million shorebirds, all racing to reach their breeding grounds in the north. Dunlins mingle with flocks of western sandpipers. Some have traveled from as far away as Peru. All have just two months to find a mate, lay eggs, and raise a family. They must refuel as fast as possible. There's still an 800 mile journey ahead. Slender bills with sensitive tips help them find tiny worms and mollusks. Most feed for three days straight, only stopping at high tide. Only then will they have enough energy for the final leg of their trip. It's not just migrant birds that are in a rush to raise a family. 160 miles north of the delta, in a valley sheltered by the Talkeetna Mountains, one of Alaska's permanent residents must also act fast. Arctic ground squirrels sleep through the winter in cozy burrows lined with fur and lichen. But now, according to their body clocks, it's time to rise and shine. It's this male's first glimpse of daylight for eight months. But he can't hang about. Noisy neighbors are popping up everywhere. Male squirrels emerge before females to establish territories. Firstly, rivals must be driven out. Sometimes shouting's enough. But when verbal warnings aren't heeded, things get physical.
by keeping rivals at bay, he increases his chances of meeting females. And he'd rather be a lover than a fighter. At last, a female. She'll only be receptive to mating for four hours in any given year. Get his timing wrong, and he'll be painfully rejected. Success. He's at first base. Now, all he has to do is keep an eye on her and be patient. He won't help raise his offspring. But waiting for the right moment to conceive them is a chance to get to know each other. Every day, the sun has a little longer to warm the ground. Snow melts and rivers begin to flow. Ice jostles and jerks its way downstream. Even in Alaska, ice doesn't sit still forever. As mountain streams thaw out, American dippers move in. There's plenty of food here to feed their growing family. But the creeks become flooded with meltwater. A gentle cascade is now a raging torrent. Their nest and the chicks inside are in serious danger. Would you like to see the beauty of the Alaskan wilderness firsthand? Well, with £6,000, you have the chance to do just that. Whether you long to see the brown bear in its own habitat or go in search of the elusive native moose, £6,000 could be just what you need to tick Alaska off your bucket list. Explore the interior and Alaska's scenic byways. Discover unique native cultures or visit awesome glaciers whilst whale watching. £6,000 could take you on an Alaskan adventure full of unforgettable memories. So, for your chance to win £6,000, text WILD to 65515 or call 0904 161 655. Or post your name and phone number to WILD PO Box 7557 Derby DE10 NP. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Calls cost £1.50 plus your network access charge. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three working days later for postal entries. For rules, go to channel5.com slash win. Good luck. This American Dipper spent winter on the coast, where open water allowed her to ride out the cold snap on a diet of fish. But every spring, she returns upstream to her favorite creek to raise a family. They've hatched four chicks, but this year there's a problem. The sudden thaw has flooded the creek with meltwater. She had nested on the edge of a waterfall to keep predators at bay. But now, a ton of water crashes down every second. A thick outer shell of moss protects her chicks from the spray. But access into the nest is treacherous. Only strong toes and a powerful grip 
stop her sliding to oblivion. Chicks need feeding every four minutes, keeping both parents very busy. They scan the shallows from their favorite boulder. Highly oxygenated water supports an abundance of bunks, which the dippers hunt either by snorkeling in the gravel bed or by diving for richer pickings further down. They hunt for an hour at a time, making up to 35 feeding trips between them. To help them stay waterproof, they spread oil from their preen gland through their feathers before taking the plunge again. Dipper chicks stay in the nest for longer than most other birds their size. They won't fledge until they're almost fully developed. That's over two weeks away. And with the thaws still in progress, the river will keep creeping towards their nest. One thousand miles northwest of the Dippers, just outside the Arctic Circle, rising temperatures are both a blessing and a curse. Muskox still haven't shed their thick winter coats, and they're feeling the heat. Resting on a windy ridge helps a little. Back in the depths of winter, females were pregnant, food was scarce, and woolly coats were the only thing that kept them alive. Surviving until spring has its own rewards. After an eight-month pregnancy, muskox cows have given birth. Calves are up on their feet within hours of being born. And for good reason. They need to suckle at least 20 times a day. Mums use all their energy for making milk, so there's none left for growing a summer coat. And until there is, they can't shed their winter ones. Any physical effort gets them hot and bothered. And cards caught dawdling are given short shrift. It may not feel like it now, but this calf will find safety in the herd. Come winter, they'll rely on the adults, not just for food and warmth, but for protection from ravenous wolves as well. If they're to survive, best stick close to mum. Whilst muskox calves fatten up in the north, 600 miles south on the Seward Peninsula, there are new arrivals of a different kind. Sand Hill Cranes, fresh in from California. 
Cruising at an average altitude of 5,000 feet, they've been riding the thermals for over 2,000 miles. Now, with their breeding ground in sight, they spiral back down to Earth. The breeding season starts as soon as their feet touch the ground. Cranes form lifelong partnerships and nothing puts them in the mood for mating more than a dance. Youngsters head off to do their own thing. No one wants to see Dad dancing. It starts with a wing stretch. And once he's got her attention, it's time to dance. It's not about how elegant you are. It's about relaxing and letting go of inhibitions. Dancing strengthens the pair bond. If you can bust a good move, you're also likely to have the skills required to drive predators away from your nest. They renew their commitment to each other by singing, which may also stimulate ovulation. And after all that song and dance, Mating is over in under four seconds. Sandhill cranes build their nest on the ground, which makes them vulnerable to predators. If they're to hatch any chicks, these big birds will need to keep a low profile for the next 30 days. Alaska is home to 30,000 brown bears. 2,000 of them live in Katmai wilderness area. Adults are normally solitary. But in spring, Meadows brimming with sedge grass draw them together. Sedge contains a lot less protein than meat or fish, so bears need to eat a lot of it just to maintain their weight. Regular naps aid digestion.
With the gathering comes an opportunity to woo a mate. Competing males try to give each other space. Submissive body language keeps low-ranking bears out of trouble. Any that don't read the signs end up in a brawl. Young bears avoid trouble by staying on the sidelines. These two are almost three years old. They've been nurtured by their mother since they were born. She's gone grazing with the other bears on the meadow. They don't know it yet, but she won't be coming back. You still have the chance to win £6,000. You could use it to take a once-in-a-lifetime trip to the pristine wilderness of Alaska for an awe-inspiring adventure that you'll never forget. So for your chance to win £6,000, text WILD to 65515 or call 0904 161 655 or post your name and phone number to WILD, PO Box 7557, Derby DE1 0NP. For rules, go to channel5.com slash win. Good luck. Two young bears have been abandoned by their mother and are now facing life on their own. She's been their teacher and their comfort blanket for the past three years. But the time has come to break up the family. She has a new admirer. He'll trail after her until she's ready to mate. Fighting any other bears that get in the way. There's no way her cubs will get past 900 pounds of muscle and escape with their lives. They may have parted ways with mum, but they've still got each other, which will help smooth the way as they set off on the road to independence. Their mother will be fertile for up to 30 days. Footloose and cub free, she may mate with several males in that time. If she has twins again, it could be that each cub has a different father. But she won't know till spring, as her fertilized eggs don't start to develop until she's back in hibernation. In that way, she can save raising new cubs until next spring, when there'll be plenty of food about. Other animals already have hungry youngsters to feed. And Eagle Beach, 700 miles east of the Bears, is the perfect place to find baby food. This male bald eagle returns here every spring. And not just for the hunting, 
but because this is where he's always raised his family. He returned here three months ago with his partner of 13 years. Their nest survived the winter gales, but was in need of some repair. They quickly get it up to scratch, and today is a big day. The female hatched a solitary egg this morning, and by the sound of it, the chick's doing well. For the next two weeks, the male will do most of the hunting. There are fish here, if you know how to get them. Sand lances hide in the sand to escape predators at low tide. Finding them is simple, if you're as clever and well-equipped as a raven. Each fish is a high-fat, high-energy snack. Perfect food for eagle chicks, too. But this dad hasn't got the hang of digging them up. There is another way. He looks to cash in on the raven's success and launches a raid. In a split second, the raven loses half his catch. <laughs> One for him. The rest, he'll take back to the nest. The female spends most of the day brooding her new hatchling. But the return of her mate gives her an opportunity to stretch her wings. And a chance for him to feed his progeny for the first time. Last year's chick was weak and died after only two days. This one seems stronger but it will need feeding at least eight times a day. If this family are to avoid another tragedy, the next few weeks are critical. Spring in Alaska arrived with the melt and triggered a season of rapid transformation. The race was on to start a family. Sandhill cranes saw eggs become chicks. Dippers saw chicks become fledglings. Muskox calves survived the school of hard knocks. And two young bears learned to cope without mum. Spring saw many flourish. But did it all come too late for the Arctic foxes to raise a family of their own? Next time, summer is coming. And new challenges begin. Youngsters must grow up, fatten up, and stay out of danger. Summer is when the clock starts ticking and the countdown to winter begins. Animals must make the most of the good times or it'll all be for nothing.